Hi folks, we're out on a guided tour. Daily in the middle. This is Ireland's oldest clapper bridge, which is a bridge on top of standing stones or stepping stones. So this is the island's oldest. Oh, there's a bit missing here. Um, sorry, folks. We are what's called them the stepping stones. They're not actually stepping stones. It's a clapper bridge. It's fairly old, and um, like there is no first record of it, but it's it, 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 it's easily a thousand years old, and wow. it has been done up at various stages. But it's been in continuous use. It hasn't been. It, it was. It ha there's a stone after falling over there, and any time it has ever happened. They are always put on again because Baby it was swimming. always a great shock to get <laughs> to the village and it was always used. And like it was in, I remember in the, the, the early late 80s, early 90s, a, a lot of work was done on it in solidifying it. But even prior to that it was always being used. And so it isn't kind of a recent refurbishment at all. But um, it's um, Clapper Bridges. Around here anyway, there's three of them. There's one in, on the road to Bellabona, beside the road to Bellabona. There's one in Hugon, and there's one here. And apart from that, there are, there are very new to know whether they're very common or not for you. Do you have any... Yeah, that's, my understanding is that they're not... I don't want to say they're very rare, and then somebody said they've seen loads of them. Like, but there's a ten. Oh, there's ten in Munster. So what those are saying there is that there's ten in Munster and there are three in this parish. The one in Gugan, this one, and the one that you walked in over there. Because originally before the roads were built, that was the floodplain of the Lee. This is the River Lee and the floodplain. That's all that area where the road was and the old bend of the flood. And so when the floods just back up from the lake, because uh, further down is the uh, road, and it used back up here and flood all this area. And the, the drainage, there was no other drainage channel anyway, that, what, that we crossed over first of all, which was what drained where the path was over across the spread. Now, Bielahangarik, the name Bielahangarik means hurry, hurry. The Long Eric means the, the ford at the mouth of the wooded area. Where is a that is a where it's a low level wooded and um, a lot of it is impenetrable. It's the, the it, it extends all the way from east of Macroom up through what is called the Bear in Macroom now. But the Bear was a massive area or is it, it, the same name is applied all the way up here, north or west of Inchigila as well, and all through up as, as far as that bridge. And after that, then the valleys just slow out. So the Guerra was a low, flooded, wooded area, and our Alguerra was. I mean, a few feet from home, they're called Guerra because that's what they were. There's, there's, there's town towns, hurry, hurry. There's Guerra in the Square in the corner, there's square in the peke. Now, they might not be square, but it, it, the name was called Boggy Places. The Ford in the Benning Gear is named Ah. Actually, isn't this one? It's probably Dunnago Olos, it did a, a, a local guide about 40 years or 50 years ago. And he, what he says, it's the one further down between Den Lynch's land and Pat Theory's land. It's where the lake <coughs> in front of Bailey. Seamus Cohn and the Melton Toomies. Uh, uh, dog. That lake, where that lake narrows and joins on to the other lake, there was a ford there, and people used to cross the paths and parks. And that was the, the first crossing place to cross the river uh, above each hill. And that was where the Aha, or the ford was. Um, and the village didn't develop there because everything around here gets flooded regularly. And then the village developed later on, then above in Benningiri village, uh, and more than likely kind of developed around the church and a school and and up, up that boy road of, uh, across the creek. But anyway, that's the story of the. This is the River Lee, for anybody who doesn't know. But, uh, it, it's
to me is actually how the bridge has survived because during a really bad rain there's a fierce volume of water coming down here and because there's lots of holes and it, it can take it and then it goes over at various times it has come under pressure from trees and things like that but it hasn't been demolished. My dog's hassling with me. I would say they are the original stones. Um, and now that, that place over there now collapsed, that was very recent. It wasn't, it wasn't done earlier in the summer. Um, where that has collapsed, like, but I'm sure something will come along and it'll be won't hit. <laughs> now the pathway that we walked down, you know, originally the walk was across here and straight up across the field. And the path and the local community came to the Dogs, Bailey, get it! Get it! It's a public, it's a public right Bailey! Sit down. And, um, Sorry, so the ditch then was stood up again by the push before and then tried to tell how you can down the where it was and then where it was trying to uh, put in the gravel in and it's kind of opened it up a bit because it, got, it gets very messy in the, in the winter. When you're going up, look out for that. Does it, what's that? It has a white flower it's a, and it's behind Ty's head there. It's a Gilder Rose. Um, G-O-I-L-D-E-R um, Rose. And the berries are poisonous, but it's a very, it's a lovely hedgerow plant. But in the spring, when it's flowering, if you have, if you have one ear, you'll recognise it from now on. When it's flowering, it actually has a false, it has four lovely white petals in it, and they're fake. They're not real petals. The petals are underneath, and they're fairly drab looking. But the flower has developed are a bright petal, fake petals just to attract bees, that's all. Interesting fact for more. No, and... Oh yeah, sorry, this house here. This house here, Mark Mar 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 lives there now. She uh, inherited from her own Timmy James thing. And he bought it. The previous owners were, there was a little hand, there was a little hand, and her husband, who only had a company. <coughs> he used to have a shop in the village. And she was born there, this little hand. She was a teacher in the school. And her, she was, uh, Leanne was her married name. Her maiden name was Ahern. And they're the same Ahertons that were in Pack Ahertons above an octus and... Or not above an octus, above Cain Kervula. And, um... You know, Pat Ahertons place anyway, drug behind you. And... And one of the people... And uh, John Ahertons from there moved down here and built this house. And he had a son, James Ahertons, who was a big noise in the Gaelic Revival in the... in the... Uh, 130 years ago. 100... Uh, maybe, no, sorry. 10 or 15 years ago. He went to he was down, he was an extra Irish down in the Sint in Delisand. And he was just falling off with Patrick Pierce because he had no time for, it was 100 years ago, because he had a fellow Paddy Pierce. And because Paddy Pierce was big into the middle of the scene, and that Colonel Vega, which was, which they both were members of, Colonel Vega was um, being used by the military people to help the 1916 rising and this James Lucy Ahern was dead against that he was a pacifist and he was he fell over the wall he was a big supporter of Clash of the Moon but after that he stopped completely he stayed lecturing in Irish he never spoke a word of Irish to his children after that and his he, 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 even though he had, was a big enthusiast of it but he became very it was another one of the results of the Sorry, 1916 huh? rising was that a lot of the people who were supporters of the Canic Royce turned against it because and, uh, it, well, his granddaughter wrote, Marie Quinn O'Connor wrote a book last year about James Lucy and her and it was, it, she said like that her mother who was his daughter, he never spoke Irish to at all at all and he made a point of it because he didn't want to get involved in the bitterness that had developed from the, the 1916 writing. And he, he used to write, sorry, he used to write he used to write um, books, or he had written uh, books helping people to develop their Irish, like primers for Irish. This James Lucy, her sister was there then, she was governess, and she taught in the school, she was, yeah, she was replaced by this girl. Yeah, that's right, she was governess Lynch, yeah, or governess Lynch, governess Lehan, Lehan. She was, that was her daddy name, her maiden name was Ahern, and she was a sister to this James Ahern. Who was the lecturer down in Boston? Or was this cruel? Or he was the hand. He was, he was a shopkeeper from the village. I don't understand. He wouldn't get somebody's related to him. But he wasn't great with money. He was from the village. He was from the village. He had a. He had a. He 
could have been one of the Johnny Connie ones or something, I don't know. He was, he really had a, a, a business in the village. Like they say in the news after somebody dies when their liver fails, it was a moment of life. Anyway, this James Lucy here. It's in the book actually, so I can't tell you. She fell out with the rest of her family because she married him. <laughs> because he, was, he didn't like it. Okay? He was actually part of his problem was that he was very flahula. He gave people credit and he actually gave credit to a man to buy a suit so the man could immigrate to America. So, <laughs> right, I'm going to jump down. <sighs> but anyway, um, that's, that's it. Be careful. We're going back to Costco and what we do, we'll go back to the car. We'll have to move on. And I'll meet you at the gate of the island. Bailey. Any questions? Oi. Any phone seashells? I'd say no to somebody. So that gives you the idea of the Clapper Bridge. Good announcer people anyway. So this is the River Lee. Right, make our way back. Talk to you so we're back on our walk. We're at Guggenmara again. Just a graveyard there and St. Phil Bars. Two. And we're walking. Kids have gone off exploring. So bored. I won't bore you with the walk, with the talk. But I'll show you some of the scenery anyway. This is a... Some kids enjoying themselves. This is a little island with the church on it. Apparently the church is very popular for weddings and things like that. There's a massive fire here not long ago. I assume this is part of the old chapel and <coughs> I just read in the church that this stone had been stolen. It's missing. Contact the guard. So maybe this is the stone, maybe this is a replacement. Looks like it could be a replacement, some of these scratches are quite new. I don't know. And stations of the cross all over the place, as you can see. Crosses everywhere. in there. Yeah. We found money growing in a tree. Money. Money growing in a tree is very good. Oh wow. Gotta give it a ring. 10.25. Wow. 
Wow. Lovely copper beach. This area here. The survival edge. That building over there, which looks like it was a church at one stage, is actually probably, we could have said it, um, that it looked at it in more detail, that that's a fairly recent structure. It's not a very well built wall, but that they probably used the walls of an older building. There could have been one building going that way, and that this was the door going into it, which breed across in, in the hotel maintains that. Who was it? Did she hear it from somebody? Or? Yeah, from someone. She always knew it. Or I was knew it. That, 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 that mound that you see there, that that was the old church, and that this was the back wall of it, or the back, the back door of it. And that this, and what I would be standing on here would be another wall of it, or over, over this direction. So that, that would have been one wall here. That before the chapel was built, and possibly when this was being built, that they needed a church, and that they built it there. And that in later times, they moved, moved things around and reused the stone and like that wall over there and that gable in there aren't great, aren't very well built, they're not as well built as this wall here, these two walls here. And Breda was saying as well, in the, Breda, Lucy in the hotel was saying that this arched, <coughs> this was arched at an earlier stage as well. Um, is there, that of, of it arched, like, so that's fairly recent, so like, um, it's taken to that side open. So then on, on last year, oh yes, we just walked through here now. In 18, 18, I'm sorry, no, I don't have my exact date, but we'll get them when we go over to the grave. Dennis O'Mahony was a priest, seemingly he was the parish priest of this parish at some stage, and after he left Jernary, at a later stage he came back and he was, he, he set up a hermitage here and it was he who caused these buildings to be built. There's a flagstone with all the stuff about the, the, the rounds at the bottom of the step there outside and that it says that, that, he, that was he built the, the cells that are here and this is probably associated with him. So it's, there was an altar there. And it was stolen, that's the famous altar that was stolen, if you saw it, if you heard about it there last, last day, every 12 months, there was an altar that was there. And it, was, it, it had, it had um, uh, crosses etched into it, something similar to that small stone in the wall there. There was lots of crosses etched into it, and it was stolen and taken away, two people could have carried it. Like. So that's its replacement there now, in, in, in the last 12 months, like it's, it's beginning to get a bit worn down from people coming along. And this is what Usually what people do is when they're here is they, they make them out, sign of the cross on the stones or else around in different locations. And there's another tradition or another story from a work that somebody did in 18, the 1890s, the pipe, that, um, the, that there was a thing called the Bantry Man's Tent was over there. No, Bantry Man's seemingly was a corruption of Chocolamine truck. So it could have been a place where the men were inside here, and there was a place here for um, for nuns, or for not not even nuns, lay lay hermits. People, uh, the women were in this side of it here, and then this might have been a communal facility here between them, a chapel, maybe a feeding area, or some place here like that, that. That that the cells inside here wouldn't have been covered, but that their communal eating facility, the common area, would have been here, and that the women were over there, and that the men were inside in that structure. That, 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 that structure didn't survive. So that's those bones there, seemingly. The um, Cork Archaeological Society did a survey of it in, 18, in 1896. And that was what they came to, the, the, the conclusion they came to. But they had no hard and fast evidence of it at all. Apart from um, just surmising, from, which is a lot of archaeology is only surmising anyway. Um, now we'll, or we'll walk away in. Any questions? Oh, does it, yeah, to me, that's, that only... That's only been rooted out in the last two years. Yeah. Yeah, two years. It's a well, like, is it? Yeah. And there's a lock in it, like, I mean, so this is a well. The, well the, the old well there, there was going down the same level as the lake. Alright, yeah. And that, that can, yeah. The so the a small boy fell in, drowned there, so the, the parish priest with the parish ordered to be closed in. Yeah. So. Oh. There you go. So a boy drowned in there. Um. Huh.
we'll go in quite a hole. The cells, yeah. like? Yeah, or the cells. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what they've been speaking. It is, we talk, in the, there's photographs from 1904. Show you the views. I should be listening to the talk really, but unless you're from this area and stuff, it can be a bit slow. So there were big fires here during the year. The landscape was quite badly scarred, but I'll go in and film this stuff. So these are the cells. Interesting. So each of these would be accommodation. bench at the back. Another little bench. Can't be sleeping platforms. I don't know. I can't be very comfortable. But anyway, this is the this is the the, the cells in Wuhan, in Tilden. Um, and it's it's uh, <laughs> how many are there? Two, four, fifteen, six, eight. There's eight, that's a, a lot of table quizzes, quizzes around here, ask that question, I can not <laughs> get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the, um, the, the, the monks anyway, the, there are so many anyway, but banished here because of, see, there, there was only, there's only one source for the rumour that, how would I say, <laughs> fornication, thank you, <laughs> so, uh, an indiscretion of some sorts, um, but, uh, uh, um, but he was, that was the rumour, or that was the rumour, that was the one of the historical documents um, says is that, is that that was the reason why he was here and a part of his penance was that he wanted to come here and set up the hermitage of that. That was his motivation. And it's very it's very strange that he he came here and managed to build all this in 1700, like I think it was 1720 when he died. We'll see for sure now when we go over. I really should have checked out my dates before I came over. Like, but um, it's very unusual for them to have done for him to have been able to do that because the penal laws were in force at the time. No, it it to, to build this structure and to to get to, to get away with it for a Catholic priest to do that and for it, it's just it's it's just very unusual. I don't know how it happened. There isn't any evidence that he was persecuted for building this or that the closure of it was because he was made closer or anything. It's just it's one of the one of the questions I have about it anyway is that how come 
he was able to, to build these cells here and set up a hermitage and for it last even if it lasted last 12 months it would have been a surprise but he um, he, uh, he 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 managed it and he set it up and he um, <coughs> it, it lasted for a while and then anyway there's no evidence other than he he was here there's no documentary evidence that we have to, uh, uh, and that he's buried across the way in the other cell across, um, on the, out on the mainland underneath the graveyard and they, we have we, there's nothing else there's no other it's just Father Man, he was here, all the travel, like in the 1800s, this area became fairly popular as a tourist destination. There's people who came touring around here in 1803, 1804, 18, even before the battle came in here, and they were talking about how the hermit was here 18, 90, 100 years ago. The hermit, Dennis O'Mahony, spent a while here. And, but there's no reference about, there's no other evidence or no other reference to the fact that he was here at all, or what happened or what caused it to, to finish. But he, um, he, he, uh, Father, Father Hurley, there's a lack, a, a gra it isn't his gravestone, it's prop as a memorial to him. As far as I know, he's buried over in his home village of Enniskeen. And that, um, I thought a number of years ago, that was his gravestone, but actually it's the Kurug Susan Lakshaw Kungugunofi Er Tar Padigur Hill. This was erected so that we would remember it. And it's the same with another plaque over here for a father, father trainer who was a, used to be a guest here in the 40s, 30s and 40s. He was a friend of the Taylor and Enstys. Um, but uh, the, the, the stations of the cross that are here then were brought up here at a later stage within the last 100 years from the chapel in Bellingeri when the wounds that are in the chapel in Bellingeri were being put in. They took down those ones and brought them up here and placed them around here. Sorry, it's, it, these, there's actually, they were actually here in 1903 because there's a photograph. Pardon, Denny? Oh, yeah, this one. And they, in 1903, they, they were here. And so they had been replaced or placed here probably at the same time when Father, Father Hurley in, uh, work, uh, did, uh, got the work done that improved all this area here. You'll see in old photographs, if you go online, you'll see the Lawrence Collection photographs. Um, and you'd see po old postcards of Gugan and all that wall there is clapped. You can see up the valley, up towards the far end of the valley. Mm. So they got this done up then fairly promptly because the photograph in 1903 has lines of people over in that corner and I think the station's across it on it. And there's a, a group of people that were attending the, the course in 1903 across in Crohn's Hotel. Um, the, oh yeah, that's Gugan. Outside here then there's a plaque against the wall to Callanan, JJ Callanan. He was from South Cork City. Uh, isn't it? He was from yeah, he was from South Cork City, um, Belly Garvin area. Um, and he was he came here. He wrote a poem in with "There is a green island in Lone Gugan Barra," and it 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 was it, it's the the national anthem of Gugan. If you like, it's a it's a it's a lovely poem. But he was he he died fairly young. He went off to he got TB and he went to Lisbon. And I think he's buried in Lisbon, and his heart was sent back then and um, buried in Ireland. But um, he, the, it, there is a green island in Long Gugan Barra, where Alu of Song, Alu being the, the, the serpent or the, and the, the river going down through Loch Alun, where Alu of Song rushes forth as an arrow. In deep valleyed Desmond, a thousand wild fountains rush down to that lake from their home in the mountains. So after the mountain here was burnt last year, and any rain that came after that, you could see all the, every single one of the, the the streams coming down here from the side of the the, the mountain, and they there were the, the fountains that were coming down into deep Valley de Desmond. This is sometimes called Valley Desmond, but actually it comes from that poem. But what it actually means, deep Valley Desmond, is the deep valleys in the south of Munster. So Valley Desmond is the wrong word actually for the, the area back where the Forest Park was. Now the Forest Park was farmland up until. 50s and it was planted on 40s, planted in the 40s and it, it, the, there was two farms inside there and one of the families that was living there, they didn't own it, there were dairymen there, were the O'Sullivans and Diarmuid O'Sullivan, the cock hurler, is one of them, he's a grandson of the man who left and went down to, um, to climb and they were the, called the McGraths or the Akras. Um, there was Jor uh, Akra, or Jor O'Sullivan, was the, I think was the man who left here, and he would have been Dean O'Sullivan, the Holders' grandfather. And 
there was there was the other family that were there then were Hollands I think. Yeah. Was there Hollands there? Yeah. Yeah, there was Hollands there as well, and they they were um but both of them as far as I know in any of the censuses, they didn't own the land. They were they were there as dairy or not the censuses but the land registry or the Griffiths valuation and things going back to 1850. It was always dairy men were there. Somebody else owned the land and they used send a family used to take it then. Like share milking that's there now, but they used to go in, they'd milk the, they'd milk cows. Elizabeth, Elizabeth. They'd milk cows inside in the farm for the owner and then they'd get a bit of the produce or they'd get they'd be able to keep their own few cows as well and have the profit off so many of their cows as well. So they were called dairymen. It was a very common way of um, from, uh, of people to get onto the, the land owning ladder and build up a bit of cash and where you farm themselves after that. But the, there's another association with this area as well, up in the mountain above there, I should have shown it even wrote it. The gap actually is, if you look up in the mountain, there's two houses in Durden Lunig, the Max Sweeney houses and the Cronins. 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 And in, 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 in 1922, after Michael Collins was shot, um, the sleeve them on, the, the car that, the, the, the armoured car that was accompanying Michael Collins in that day, it was stolen from Bendon by the driver of it, who switched sides to the anti-treaty side, uh, uh, Ian, uh, Ian McPeak, I think was his name, uh, and he went, um, he took the armoured car with him, and it was brought here to Bellingary and hidden for a while, and then it was the IRA took it, the anti-treaty forces took it off to Bellavorna and attacked Bellavorna and shot up the town, there was a number of people killed in it and they took over Bellavorna from the Free State soldiers and sent the Free State soldiers back over the county bones into Killarney. It, they only held on to it for a couple of days because the Free State soldiers came back and this was in after Michael Collins died in August and after that then oh, October, November, December, it, time that this happened and the Schlieve the Man was shot up and had to be pulled by a horse and cart back here and it was hidden inside in Peddy Duncafed's place in the Cronin's yard mm -hmm. under a reek of hay and uh, there was the Free State Army wanted to get it back because it was a very dangerous thing to have and they sent out a, a massive force of people to, of, 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 of um, Free State soldiers out to find it and they were looking at all the houses around here, they had information that was around here someplace, they couldn't find it, they were above inside in the yard, the Cronin's yard, um, at the time looking for it, and they lined up the family against the wall in front of the fire, and asked them, where's the Schlieve the man, and Penny Dungafed's mother, I think it was, or grandmother, says like, Jesus, the last I heard that was above, a mountain above in Tipperary. <laughs> but anyway, that, she didn't, she wasn't, she did Left off a few shots over her head, and but, and but while that was happening anyway, they found it outside, buried in the reek of hay, and they took it away. But at the same time, while they were looking for the sleeve of the man, there was a spot or plane flying around as well, and looking for, could they see it? Like so, the the Free State Army had got a spot or plane from the British, and had flown around with it. And the fellow flying the spot or plane was a fellow called Fitzmaurice, and he was one of the. There was two pilots in 1928 flew. They were the first people to fly from Europe. From Alcock and Brown flew from America over. Lindbergh was the first solo, but the first people to fly from Europe to America against the wind. One of them was this Fitzmaurice fellow who started his time as a Free State pilot, a, free, a soldier in the Free State Army. But um, there was a, a lot of activity here during the War of Independence and the Civil War and things like that, which is we want. We'd be here all day. Tom Barry was here coming down. There's a Barry's way. There, were, there was a massive round up here actually in 1920. 1920. And the British Army, the Essex Regiment of the British Army. Potty! The Essex uh, Regiment. I think it was the Essex Regiment. I could be wrong about that now. I'm wrong about that. It was, it was the British Army anyway. And they were in charge of them. I felt like a Percival, who was the British Army fellow who surrendered Singapore. And the other fellow was Bernard Montgomery who was Monty, the, the hero of the Black Battle of El Alamein and the Northern campaign, uh, North Africa campaign and, and D-Day as well, she wasn't he over the British forces, or part of D-Day. And he, they were the two British officers in charge of rounding up the IRA in this place. And actually, we mentioned, they stayed above in Patrick Creedon's cottage. Above John Patrick Creedon lives above in the Riverine. That's the, that was where they, 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 they 
the officers stayed inside in that cottage at the time for a, for a couple of nights. But they, um, there was a massive amount of so soldiers, British Army soldiers, in a line all the way west in the mountains, west here, and they came over trying to corner the, the IRA in Gugan, Bellavona area, like, and Tom Barry, and the flying column came down through Pole, which is at the very, very back of the, of the, the forest park. They came down through a narrow passage there. It's, it's called Barry's Wave. It's the same film there. But it's actually called Barry's Wave because of Tom Barry. Um, somebody was telling me. But, um, and, but anyway, before they were captured anyway. Um, well, they escaped actually. I don't think the British Army managed to catch them. But very soon after that, the truce was called. And they, after that, everybody was happy. Sure. Um, no, outside there, there's, um, we go across the graveyard. After, after forgetting, we're not finished yet. <laughs> we have to go across the graveyard. We go to the graveyard, but there's that. Bi there's a big flag stone there against the wall, and it has. It's worth just looking at it because it's a. It's. I don't know. Did Father Hurley have it made, or did it predate Father Hurley's time? But it gives all a rundown on what needs to be done when a person is doing a round here. So many old fathers, so many Hail Marys, and the places to stop. And it, it's cemented onto the wall now, but there was a time when it wasn't cemented onto the wall, and it fell in a fell and crushed it. And dead, he was dead, didn't it? A pancake out of him. Actually, there was another. While, oh no, we'll, we'll, while we're here, I'll tell you the story about the Taylor and Anstey. I, I, I can't be telling you over inside the graveyard. Um, <laughs> there was another fella that. Um, no, we listened to over there. was a, there was another fella here, and he, um, he he did away with himself anyway. But there was a there was a uh, an inquest held in the hotel, and the tailor was the chairman of the inquest committee. And they gathered a group of locals anyway, because the coroner had to go through the process, like. And the Latin term for for what had happened is fella de se. And there was one of the local men that was brought in anyway, the tailor, was saying that, that the, the coroner kept mentioning fell in the sea, and your man was saying, he didn't fell in the sea, he fell, a rock fell in him, or he jumped into the water. <laughs> so anyway, we'll go over, I'll meet you over again across the road, in, outside the graveyard, and outside Dennis O'Mahony, Father Dennis O'Mahony's tomb. But when you're leaving, take a look there at the, the plaque down here, the, the, the stone down here, and then... JJ Callanan, there's a white cross there beside the fountain. Oh, What's the place? bell? What's the bell? Yeah. I don't know. It 10, was. 25 or something? Uh, I'd say that's just a, a weight or a grand. I, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I actually don't when know. When was this place built? 1700, about. Yeah. Um, when we rocked on there, I guess we used to go to the rock says this. This was. This is a cabinet. Hmm. So we don't know the story of the bell anyway. So, a bit long winded. Hope it was interesting for you. Have a look at this plaque that kills somebody. <laughs> <laughs> she loves being on video. Oh, so this fell on somebody. You can see where it broke. Interesting enough. Right. Talk to you later. Inside the chapel. And I think these pillars here from Zimbabwe, did he say? Imported from Zimbabwe marble. Interesting. Nice big doors. Right.